you know, so, so it's only more years to go. Is he your best young fighter? Is he your best 24-year-old? Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, he's, a, he's the youngest ever two years of world champion. Must be the youngest ever ring magazine champion. The youngest ever in the pound for pound. I don't know if he made it. I hope so. I hope so. It depends if they want to make the the fights. If they want to see the best be the best. Sometimes people want to do that. Some people want to avoid fights. But you know, we know there's a big market for the smaller weight classes in Japan. But there's also a big market here in Phoenix. And like I said, maybe even in Saudi Arabia. So, I mean, look, you know, we did like, I don't know, 9,000 tonight or close to. Next time, who says we can't do 10, 11? You know, we may, we may do the rematch. You know, we'll have to see. But, uh, he's, yeah, I'm sure. Ben, I mean, I saw some stuff tonight. I can't believe what I saw. Yeah, I'm wrong. I mean, what the fuck's he doing? Honestly, he's got something, something bad is going to happen. If someone don't get older, Ryan Garcia, I keep saying it. And, you know, you may play these clips back when something bad happens. Like, it's just, it's just a car crash. He fired against Adam Garcia, probably. Yeah. I just say, just needs help. He needs help real bad. I hope, I hope he can get it. That rematch, I know that rematch, that's something that they both want. Hey, him and Brian, let's, let's try to fast forward a little bit and have it through to a year later. Could that be the first match for both of them coming back after a year? Very good. What can you tell us about this uh, the, the fight here that's going on in Saudi Arabia? Nothing really. I mean, there's, you know, there's really just exploratory conversations. You know, His Excellency has an incredible vision for boxing. He's got a lot of ideas. The stuff that was reported, half was correct, half was incorrect. You know, we're bound by confidentiality on a lot of these things. So, but there's a lot of exciting things being discussed. And you know, if there's a way to bring boxing together, you've seen him do that quite effectively so far. I think it's something that a lot of people would be interested. In. The team concept with five versus five was pretty Massive. cool. The numbers were huge, yeah. you know, and and the narrative was huge. I mean, don't forget, you've got Matcham and Queensbury. With like, yeah. obviously, you know about the right, but in the UK, it's like. We're like, you know, I don't know, New York and Boston, or I don't know, whatever you want to, you know, so, and it's like, yeah, it was pretty fierce, so it, it was a huge media story, and although we didn't do very well in the tournament, the show did very, very well on the numbers, and I think it's a concept that can work. But I mean, when you brought the, uh, you know, the Chavez Jr. and Jamie Jacobs, like, you're kind yeah. of by not choice, you had it, yeah. so... Um, could you envision like what we've seen, what we saw tonight? No, I mean, just the best atmosphere, you know, like knowledgeable fight fans. I mean, even when we started the, the prelim fights, it was really busy. You know, and I think, you know, I, I don't think we've got credit either for providing free air conditioning as well, like I said to fans tonight. I mean, it was a really nice touch from Matthew. We'll take it on the back after. Yeah, yeah. But I think when, they, when there were so many people in here earlier, I was like, they're watching the boxing and they're getting they're getting a nice cool arena you know so um i think that there's not a, a fight that you could bring here it wouldn't do well as long as it's a good fight and as long as it's a good card they understand it they get it you know and you know we will always be in phoenix at least two times a year hopefully three times a year and like when you look at bam you know don't you, you think that bam back in san antonio would make sense but it's difficult to take him away from phoenix you know, so. i was gonna ask you he's a star now he, he, he can draw yeah. he can draw anywhere the, the rematch we'd love to have it back in san antonio yeah. is that on the table yeah, it's just, you know, can you do 10,000 plus in San Antonio? If you can do it in Arizona, you can do it in Arizona. Well, do you want to make sure, can you guarantee me to go? <laughs> if you bring it to San Antonio, oh, that's, I'll guarantee Yeah, I'm sure you will. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> well, that, that is honestly, that's that's the, the reality of it. You know, like, I know I can do 10,000 here, probably 12,000 for the rematch. Can you do that in San Antonio? And I'd like to say yes. But it's a little bit unproven. So, but we have to go back there at some point with Ben because uh, you know you wouldn't be weird not to. So um, yeah, we'll have to see. Yeah, I know part of the storyline of this fight 
was sure a couple of people sparring yeah, that mm. you know Mr. Hunt is and they're going to yeah. his fights facing each other but I mean it's, it's oh, an excellent fight. To be honest with you, if it wasn't down to Mr. Honda I would have made that fight already. You know, but I respect Mr. Honda. You know, he cares for his fighters and I care for him as well. But I want to see him make a lot of money and sometimes the right dance partner helps you do that. And as big as the unification is, it's not probably as big as the Chocolatito fight, you know? But that's just stuff we have to dis, you know, speak to Bam and Robert about and map out his career. You know, your question about maximizing his money, you know, he's, he's making a lot of money, but now he moves into that top five pound for pound list or where it close to, you know, he deserves more and more and more. And, you know, I think he's an outstanding fighter. Eddie, I remember you saw but uh, Virgil Ortiz was in He was sitting down watching the fight, he live. Obviously, you have Brooks Onyx, that was a big fight at the one at 147. Obviously, Virgil's not at 154. Did you, maybe, has there anything that talks about when you talk to Jerron Ennis, maybe in the future? No, Jerron would love that fight. I mean, he's, I want to see Jerron, you know, obviously, fights in two weeks. I want to see him unify the division, try and clean up at 147, then move to, to 54. And if Terence Crawford gets through Madrimov, which I don't think he does, then Boots Ennis will clean out Terence Crawford. Because I think they're underestimating him. I think he's a very, very good fighter. He's extremely tough. He hits very, very hard. You know, and it's all like, you know, Canelo after this, after this, after. Like, don't get me wrong, Crawford's the favourite in the fight. But Madrimov is a very, very tough fighter. He's got great movement. He's a fit, strong guy in his prime. As I said, punches very hard, and that's that's not an easy fight. So you're gonna rely on that as well, that it's possibly if he does beat Madrimov, do you think he still will, goes up and try to face Canelo and won't, won't give him maybe a chance? Canelo versus Crawford, because I know he's very active and spoken about that. Yeah, I mean, I think that's down to his excellency. I think the only person that can make that fight is his excellency, mm -hmm. because of what Canelo wants for that fight. So. You're gonna to have to pay up for it, and the only one, the only way that's gonna pay the money that Sal wants for that fight is in Saudi Arabia. Eddie, the circle of life in boxing is kind of like the young guy beats the legend, and in the process, kind of like you know picks up his fans mm. along the way. Is that kind of like your goal for tonight? Yeah, I think. That, I mean, it wasn't necessarily the goal, but I think that you're right. I think that happens. I mean, you know, there's, there's, a, I'm sure there's a lot of mixed feelings tonight because I think the Mexicans do also like Jesse. They love the way he fights. He fights like a Mexican. Um, you know, he's beaten Quadras, he's beaten Estrada, and they, they know and respect the, the smaller weight classes. So, yeah, I think that, that would be the case. What do you think of the scenario where it looks like maybe Conor McGregor is going to be on that UFC card at the Sphere mm. around September 14th, and yet Canelo, that's always been his day. Mm. Do you think Canelo would move off that day? Mm, it depends where he fights. You know, who knows if His Excellency does a deal with Canelo for Crawford and, I don't know, maybe another fight I think has been talked about or, you know, if PBC do a fight. I mean, I, th I think he'll fight Belanga next. I do. You know, I think when you look at the options, he's going to have a fight before he fights Crawford or before he fights someone else. So who else is there to fight? Well, you've got two mandatories. One is William Skull, who I've never heard before him of before in my life with all due respect to you I'm sure he's a good fighter and the other one is Edgar Belanga who's a Puerto Rican knockout artist who's fought on ESPN fought on the zone everybody knows him and it's a it's a competitive fight so I think he'll fight Belanga next a fight in New York right doesn't that fight no, I, don't know. I think Vegas New York wherever you know but you know if there's the, the sphere fight then maybe they want to do it in New York. I'm not sure. Well, Canelo hasn't fought in New York at least recently. Is that do you want to oh, put there him against Rocky Fielding? Oh, you're right. Yeah, a few about, years yeah, back. Yeah, four years. I, I like it, but you know, Canelo is a bit of a creature of habit, as well. He likes his Vegas fights, but also he likes fighting in Texas. But uh, New York, you know, it's like the. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, Raymond Ford. Yes. The ball fight was so good. I think yeah, it's I the fight he, of the I year. He won the fight, but you know, it's a very close fight. He probably stayed at 126, one fight too long. That was my question. But. It was a big payday. It was a big opportunity in the five v five. He's moving to one thirty, and I would like him to fight Lamont Roach for the for the world championship in October, November on the East Coast. Andy, does Matchroom have any plans for Mexican Independence Day? Um, tequila. I don't know, maybe, yeah. uh, I'm not sure. You know, traditionally, obviously Canelo fights that weekend, um, and now there's the UFC event that weekend as well. So. Sometimes it's a bit of a log jam, but you know we're, we're we're doing a lot in Mexico, and we'll be back there on August the thirty first. Eddie, in a perfect world, who does Bam fight next? It's like for, for you, for you. 
in the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think um, the Estrada rematch does big business. I mean, he'd be a big favourite going into that fight, but it was competitive and he dropped it, you know. And I think it was just the most crushing of, of body shots. Like, I, w- I would have actually liked to have seen it gone on more. I don't know. Like, you know, it was, you, Estrada's a very, very good finisher in the back half of the fight, but the body shot was so well placed, you know. But I, I think Estrada rematch, unification, Chocolatito, Inoue, I think at some point he's going to move to 118, but I'd like to see him unify first at 115. Is the Chocolatito fight real because Mr. For me, Honda always no, says... No, but prob- yeah. probably not. But I would say to Mr. Honda, look, you know, if you look at the big fights out there for Chocolatito, who are they? I mean, only one you left. could do the Estrada 4, but, like, he's banned, yeah. really. So you get to a stage where you say to Mr. Honda, if you don't allow the fight, you're actually taking a payday away from him. So unless you can come up with another option. I, I okay, but not, nothing as big as Bam. You know. What's next for Ramla Ali? Well, I don't know about you guys, but I thought the scorecards were terrible for the Ramla Ali fight. You know, I mean, I don't see how it can be anything else other than um, six. Uh, 96-94 either way I mean that every round's close in a two minute round this is one of the problems but 98-92 twice I mean ridiculous so maybe there'll be a rematch but you know I'd like to see her get another shot do you still think that you could get a shot to do the Canelo next fight I mean it's really down to the zone you know they share, they had the broadcast last time didn't promote the fight or uh, you know we didn't promote the fight they didn't have to put the guarantee up but they got the broadcast and they did extremely well yeah. so they're quite happy doing that to be honest with you so yeah I know so business is good for zone. they're doing amazing at the moment their numbers are through the roof so we're in a really good position with a platform so you don't want to be over guaranteed it's my opinion not their opinion you don't want to be over guaranteeing fighters for fights and doing millions of dollars in the process on the guarantee because we've seen people do that before yeah. and they left the business quite quickly. Do you want to see Bam fight again in 2024? Sorry? Do you want to see Bam fight one more time in 2024? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's fresh. Like, I know it's a tough fight but he's pretty fresh. So. Alright guys, Thank thanks. You so Thank you. See you soon.